far away. Cool, so I just get you to say your name and sort of... Cool. Um, from and... My name's Pete. I'm from Sydney. I'm here at uh, Occupy Sydney. Um, you know, there are many different different reasons why, why people are here. And, uh, and a lot of people are here for the same reasons as well. Um, my story, I, I'm, I'm in finance. Um, I'm self-employed. I, I don't work for any of the big guys um, who, uh, who, uh, who, who, whose business revolves around uh, corrupted systems, so to speak. Um, I don't think I would be here at Occupy Sydney if I wasn't in the finance industry because working in that industry has shown me um, that it is truly corrupted to the bone in the way um, that uh, smaller smaller companies and, and, and larger firms within the financial system um, are every day striving to make more and more, um, sometimes at an exponential rate, which um, sometimes is completely unsustainable. Um, so in saying that, it um, for me one of the major reasons that, that I've come down is because We live in a country which focuses on the point that we live within a democracy. Obviously not true. Theoretically it can work, but uh, practically democracy is, is not working and has not worked thus far. Um, one of the examples I'd like to use, which is directly related to why I'm here, is the fact that we vote for leaders uh, to run our country the way we would like it. Um, in my opinion, those votes count for nothing whatsoever. Um, reason being is um, to get votes for presidency or, or to get votes to become prime minister here in Australia, uh, one must campaign. Uh, their theories, their rules and regulations that they'd like to bring in, different laws they'd like to change. Um, and for them to do that, they need quite a bit of money to run around and campaign uh, exactly what they would like to do in terms of leading, um, leading their people. That money often comes, more often than not, comes from large corporates, uh, oil companies, um, large firms in the financial sector. Um, it often comes from those who um, try and seek large military contracts um, and so forth. A lot of these candidates are getting their campaign money from companies like this for the reason that these large corporations want, want to be assured that the next person that comes into power is on their side, is working the laws um, around their systems to allow them to achieve that goal of, of creating exponential wealth. Uh, large amounts of dollars in very short periods of time and there's only one word for the political gifts that are offered to candidates and in my opinion that word is corruption and uh, that is one of the specific reasons I am here in Occupy Sydney. Um, I know there are many other reasons why people are here um, and you would have to talk to them of course. So just, but, um, just on that point we do have uh, campaign, we have rules about campaign donations and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. are, you, are you suggesting there's ways that corporations circumvent these rules? And do you have any specific examples that are on the public record or that... Look, it's, it, it, it's a really good question. It's a, it's a really good question. Um, you know, I, I, I put forward this, if we know about all of this um, uh, all of this corruption going on, political gifts, so to speak. Why aren't we uh, in a powdered, in, 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 in a place to do something about it? Once again, the one percent um, are in power, and when they make up the rules, they make up these rules and laws and regulations to suit them, um, to create more powers, to exponentially increase their their power over the ninety-nine percent. So. It, 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 it becomes so increasingly impossible to prove uh, corruption 
to the point where we are here now and we are calling upon 99% to stand up and say enough is enough. Um, we cannot do it with 90%. We cannot do it with 95%. We need simultaneously around the world the 99% to stand up um, and make sure that governments take notice, corporates take notice. Um, it's, it's, it's a totally flawed system. It's obviously not working. Um, so we obviously need to speak out about it and, and, and hopefully do something about it if possible. So you mentioned before that you were a day trader. Can you just explain, because a lot of us here don't understand half of what people actually do when they're trading foreign currencies, they're trading commodities. I find it very difficult to understand derivatives. Sure. Is there an argument to be made without even having to understand all these complex financial products? What, what sort of... What value are they creating? That's the thing I just don't quite understand. Um, once again, in my opinion, it's it's linked to the um, ever-growing uh, ambition for for big corporates within finance to to, to continue growing those those profits, um, and they're always coming up with different ways to, to do so. Um, derivatives um, in the relatively recent past um, has has taken off. Uh, it's it's a new uh, it's a it's a new form of leveraged product um, that is offered by the financial system um, to to clients those who wish to want to get involved in in, in the markets um, to 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 get involved and quite easily they make it very easy for the for um, pretty much anyone to jump online and trade these derivatives which are highly uh, dangerous products. Um, they're very complicated products and they are really only understood by those that create them and work with them every day. Um, and it's, 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 it's very difficult for anyone to, to understand them unless you, unless you study them quite closely. Hence, um, hence the risks are immense for those who, 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 who are not professionals or who, who don't quite understand how, how these derivatives work. Um, so it is just another way, um, it, it's, it's, it's another way that was conjured up for, for large, uh, large corporations, small corporations, stockbrokers, um, to, to continually find um, that extra, extra dollar that they require to please their, 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 um, their shareholders, um, you know, to, to, to help um, justify, um, you know, they want the share prices to increase to help justify, you know, the massive pays that the CEOs get as well. Um, you know, not that, not that if the share price is going to drop, the CEO won't get his cut anyway, but um, it's, just, it's just another justification that they try and use to, 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 um, to um, pay these CEOs, you know, increases of anywhere between 50 and 100% and of, 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 um, of their pay, which is um, pretty disgusting when you think about it because, you know, there, there, there are people out there, you know, for instance, Qantas workers who, who are struggling to negotiate for a 3% wage increase. So, um, in my opinion, the system just doesn't make sense and, it, and it's flawed. Well, just while you're here, because I think you're probably the first person today I've spoken to about finance who actually works in finance, can you explain high frequency trading and the sort of things that go on with that? Because mm. I heard a statistic that the average share, the average time a share is held is something like seven seconds. Yeah, look, that's um, that's an interesting one. I don't know too much about that personally. Um, I uh, day trade. Um, I, I day trade predominantly indexes like the Dow Jones, the Australia Top 200, and a couple of commodities here and there. But um, yeah, I, I have to admit I, I'm probably not really willing to comment too much about something that I, I don't know a whole lot about. Um, Fair enough. 